Do you see this? This moment of brother solidarity right here? Alright, recently Ann Terrio had a post on her uh, Twitter asking people for their foremost on-brand uh, sort of formative YA books that really exemplify who they were and who they are now and rather than responding to the tweet I thought this would make an excellent book chat and it really dovetailed with something that I had been wanting to talk about for a while. So today I'm just going to kind of focus on answering that question. These are going to be four books that I think are the most on brand and really pivotal in my own personal development um, at that stage, at that kind of like tween to teen stage. Sometime in the future we'll be talking more about books as the kind of benchmarks of a life and well, I'll get more into that when we get there. Um, but today I'm just going to talk about four books that I read as a tween or early teen that I think are the most me, the most on brand, and were read to death. This list could be much longer than it is and I'll probably get into more of them in a follow-up video at some point, but these four, there's no denying them. So the first, and I would be very remiss not to mention, the Song of the Lioness Quartet by Tamara Pierce. I read the first one when I was maybe 11 or 12. I've talked about this before. They opened up new worlds to me. They really changed what I thought a book could be, what I thought a book could give me, what a female character could be. There's no denying that even though I don't think I'm necessarily an Alana myself, the imprint on me in that kind of developmental stage, there's no denying it. She left her mark. George left his mark. Talked about him before too. Whew. Whew. Those books, those characters, that world are deeply ingrained in me and will never not be. I can still read them to this day and feel transported and it's just they have influenced many things down the line for me, including, I would say, they've at least fed into my love of kind of gender bending and girl dressed as boy stories. We've talked about that before too. There were many things in my early life that fed into that, but uh, Alana was up there. Next we have a book that I actually fought against for so long and didn't want to read, and that is this is going to shock you guys. That is Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. This was something that my, let's see, I was in sixth grade, I think, when I read this, but she was a fifth grade teacher. We did this thing um, to kind of prepare us for middle school and high school where our fifth grade and sixth grade teachers at this tiny little school that I went to swapped classes, and the fifth grade teacher, who was excellent, I loved her so much, she would teach the kind of language arts things. Uh, other stuff too, but that's this. You, you don't care about any of that. Basically, she split us into groups and she assigned reading based on what group you were, and it was supposed to kind of be at your level. And of course, being the voracious reader that I was, I was at the hardest level, and this was the biggest book that was assigned to any of the groups by a long shot, which I didn't have a problem with. But the sort of old-fashionedness of it for whatever reason I rebelled against and thought I was really gonna hate it. I read the first couple of pages and then I just was like refusing to read more like vocally like I think my teacher actually had to talk to me like no you're gonna like this would you just shut up and read it and so I finally just took it home one night I think I might have actually snuck it out of the class or something I don't know just to get it out of the way and I take back everything that I put that poor woman through because <laughs> Ah, it's Anne of Green Gables, you guys. I mean, come on. Obviously. Obviously. I adored it. I tore through it. I pushed it on the rest of the group who also had rebelled and didn't want to read it. Um, I just, I couldn't stop singing its praises. I think most readers will see some of Anne in themselves, but it felt like coming home. Like, she was a bosom friend. Everything about her just spoke to me. The whimsy and the intelligence and the melodrama and the need to talk non-stop and a mile a minute. It all was very me. It all remains very me. It's all very much on brand. And again, that is one that has just left an indelible mark. And as a part of me, she always will be. Those characters, that world, I can reread it to this day and still fall just as much in love. Have reread it possibly more than anything in my entire life. And yes, 
that includes all of Jane Austen's books, it will not end. I will read that until the day I die. Next, and in a totally different vein, <laughs> is Witch by Christopher Pike. We talked about this book a bit in the past, and I don't know how many of you out there have read it or went through that serious, like, Christopher Pike phase. First of all, I love him, okay? I will defend him with my last breath, but Witch, there's just something about it. It might be the first book that ever made me cry, which might not be something you're expecting to hear about a Christopher Pike book, but it's not the only one of his that did. And it, it is very much part of my sort of formation. It's dark and a little, more than a little sad, and it's compassionate, and it, it just, that's another one that I read to death. Um, I do have a copy kicking around somewhere. It is totally missing a cover and maybe like the first page or two. I about sobbed <laughs> when I found it as an adult. That is one book that I feel like it changed me when I was a kid and I you could probably read this now and be like what? But it was something totally different and yet so very right <laughs> when I was kind of in my late tweens or early teens when I read it and then continued to reread it for a very long time after that feeling just as impacted every single time. I don't know. That book is just a part of me. That's a part of my soul, y'all. And lastly, and this was hard because I kind of not only could include a lot of books, but the book I'm going to mention I associate with a lot of other books, all of which could kind of be part of this, but I think this one most represents me and stood out the most, and that is Tuck Everlasting. I feel like this would end up on a lot of people's lists, especially for my generation, but as far as being kind of formative, again, this is something that at the time really captured my imagination, but also just something in me, just something internal that connected to this and felt like it was kin. There is that sort of wistful longing that pervades the whole thing, a little bit of nostalgia. You may not know this about me, <laughs> a lot of people might not know this about me, but that is me internally all the time. Just ceaseless, wistful longing. I don't know why. I can't control it. There you have it. It <laughs> just is what it is. So that book really spoke to that part of me and continues to. I still love it. it. It and all of the other books in this list feel like there's a string tied to me and to them that just is pulled taut. You know, I feel them in my guts, which I think you couldn't ask for more when you're talking about something that was part of your formation. I mean, that is what it is. You have a visceral reaction to it. So those are four books that are very on brand and very much a part of my formative years and that I still can't separate young me all the way through to current me from them. Like they just, it is a part I could never look at them objectively. I could never read them now with adult eyes and try to see like, well, is this even any good? They are the part of me. I can't, I can't not love them. <laughs> there were so many good answers in the responses and the retweets to that original question. I agree with so many of them. You know, I read a lot of them and also felt that sense of like tween passion and exuberance that you get for stories and characters that when everything is new to you, you know, everything seems like a little bit magical. Um, so many of the books that were said in the replies, I totally get it. There are also a lot that I didn't get to read. I moved a couple of times in elementary school and I kind of missed out on a certain books that I think everybody read. Like I would, they would just be starting it when I moved from one place and they would have just finished it when I moved to the new place. And so I didn't get certain things like A Wrinkle in Time and stuff like that. You know, so maybe there are other books out there that are like hallmarks, perfect answers to this question that I don't have and maybe I wouldn't even be affected by them now, but maybe you are and I want to hear about it. So definitely let me know in the comments what some of your on-brand formative YA tween books were. If you answered that original tweet, uh, drop a link. Regardless, I want to know, even if you don't have specific titles, but if it was certain things that stood out to you or certain authors, um, I want to hear all about it because I think that this is something that I talk a lot about, not always with you guys, but just in life in general. I talk about sort of the power of books throughout your childhood. I have talked about specifics, um, I'll try to link them if I can remember which ones, but as I said, there will. this is part of an overall much bigger conversation that I want to have and will be having once I can get all my thoughts in order, 
But, um, yeah, I really want to know your answers. I think this is super fascinating, and it says a lot about who you are and how you got there. So this is who I am and how I got there. I don't think there's any denying any of these, and I love them wholeheartedly. Talking about them kind of makes me feel like a kid again a little bit, and I love it. But that is all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I look forward to chatting with you in the comments, and as always, happy reading!